All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, John Hunter, as we poll for questions, just a quick question to start off. Um, obviously, a, a big um, kind of weekend for the NASCAR Camper World Truck Series, um, you know, regular season finale race, but also just returning to Watkins Glen for the first time and in a long stretch. And just um, what are you looking forward to most this weekend? Uh, I think getting back to Hawkins Glen, uh, it's been one of my favorite road courses. I think I've made one or two starts there in the past, but um, it's always uh, a place that I like going to as a kid and um, watching uh, my dad race and then Ron Fellows as well uh, run for an Info Motorsports team um, was pretty neat. I think Kyle uh, actually ran for uh, dad in, at Watkins Glen back in the day as well. So uh, I feel like there's a lot of history there. And um, I feel like Watkins Glen puts on one of the best races. Um, if I'm not driving, uh, it's definitely one of the road courses that I'm tuned into every every time that we go there. All right. Well, we'll now go to questions for John Hunter. If you have one, please raise your hand and we will fit in as many questions as we can during our time this afternoon. Who would like to kick us off? All right. Come on, someone start the uh, train. All right, Claire, go ahead. Great. Well, let's talk about you starting six at the Glen. And if you think that more and more of the truck series drivers are getting more aggressive or better at road course racing and how you look at fitting into all of that. Uh, well, I hope we make it through turn one, first of all. Um, there's, uh, I feel like a lot of guys that are in the truck field, haven't been to Watkins Glen. Um, I feel like there's quite a bit of inexperience there um, with no practice, no qualifying. It's definitely going to uh, be a little bit different. Um, I feel like Coda was definitely a lot of fun in the rain, um, but I feel like that uh, guys are starting to get more aggressive. Um, I think it's coming down to that playoff cutoff and Watkins Glen being the, the cutoff race for uh, the playoffs, I definitely think that there's going to be a lot of guys that are being aggressive, trying to win, um, doing different strategies and being aggressive on the racetrack um, as well. And I think everyone is kind of getting better at road course racing. Uh, we see the Cup Series have seven, I think, road courses on the schedule this year. Um, so you, you have to become accustomed to it. I feel like uh, kind of back in the day, um, road course ringers could come in and kind of steal the show away and I don't feel like that they have as much of an advantage anymore just because all of the drivers are putting a lot of time and effort uh, into maximizing their road, for, road course program. Well then you really have nothing to lose at the Glen right and and given that everybody's becoming more aggressive in the series and that a lot of people don't have a lot of experience with road course racing it would seem like you could have a field day or you could be more aggressive or you could you know have at it, I guess I, I would call it that. Yeah. I mean, we don't have anything to lose. That's for sure. Um, we're focused on seven playoff points uh, is pretty much what our goal is, is go out and win the stages and try and win the race. Um, it's really the only thing that matters to us this weekend with having locked up the regular season championship. Um, this, this race doesn't mean much for, for points uh, for us. So um, we're going to go out there and give it our best shot. Um, know the circumstances that we're racing around um, on people who are going to be aggressive to try and get a win and people who are on the bubble um, as well trying to get in. So um, there's there's going to be a lot going on this weekend, that's for sure. Yeah, so John Hunter Nemechek can put on a show, right? Good luck, okay? <laughs> Thanks, I appreciate it. You got it. All right, our next question will come from Bob Pockers. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah. John Hunter, do you do anything like looking forward to next year? I mean, do you guys try some stuff that, you know, maybe way out of the box or anything just to, you know, considering that you've locked up the regular season championship? Yeah, I don't know much about next year, but um, I definitely feel like uh, Eric and all of my guys have put in a lot of work. Um, we ran really well. I felt like at Daytona Road Course, um, we sucked it circuit of the Americas. Um, we, we didn't have a very good day there. Um, so we kind of went back to the drawing board on what we feel like we needed to run package wise and, uh, tried to figure some things out and put a lot of work into it. So, um, hopefully, hopefully it's going to go well. Um, I have faith in them and I feel like they have faith in me. So, um, we just got to go out there and do our job. 
Well, and frankly, just how much time have you spent preparing or has the focus already kind of started for the playoffs? Uh, we're treating it as if it were another race. Um, uh, you have to go through Watkins Glen to get to the playoffs, um, first of all. So we have spent uh, quite a bit of time preparing for it. Um, kind of like I said, the, the guys have done uh, a tremendous amount of work, uh, kind of bringing a complete different package than I feel like what we've run in the past in, in the truck series or what KBM has run in the, in the truck series in the past. So um, there's a lot of work, a lot of effort. Um, it's a new truck for us this weekend going to Watkins Glen as well. So um, we're hashtag here for wins. We want to win every single week and uh, we're going to put the effort in to do so um, just because the playoffs are starting in uh, a few weeks at, at Gateway um, doesn't mean that we're just going to uh, sit on our hands and not go and try and win a race. Okay, our next session will come from Dustin Long. Go ahead, Dustin. Thank you. Um, I'm curious, how do you feel the perception uh, of you or the narrative around you has uh, has changed this season with the, the success you've had on track? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, honestly, I haven't paid a lot of attention to it. Um, it, it's been great to have success this year. Uh, when, when we announced coming back to the truck series, um, I felt like that this was my best opportunity, um, to get back with Toyota, um, to be surrounded by a great organization that Kyle and everyone at Toyota TRD is, has assembled, um, with having Eric Phillips come back. Back uh, this year, we we wanted to win races. That's the reason we came back. Um, kind of before that, right? I hadn't won in two years, and um, I was kind of getting frustrated. Was was down on myself some, and um, I, I felt like I could do this at, at a high level. And but you you can only do it with how good your equipment is and uh, how hard that you push yourself and your team and everyone around you and you're only as good as the people that you surround yourself with so um, I, I felt like this was the best opportunity for me um, I, I feel like that we've definitely turned some heads this year I would say um, but as far as all of the chatter and banter or whatever goes on um, kind of behind the scenes and what people say um, we haven't paid attention to we're, we're just here to try and win races, win the championship, and um, do the best that we can every single week. You alluded to it a little bit, but if you can expand a little bit more, is just how your mindset has changed. What is it? I mean, look, you you had success before, so what 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 is this success meant, and, does, and how does this lead you as you look towards your future, how you'll make decisions on what your opportunities might be moving forward? Um, that's a very good question. Uh, I have had success in the, in the truck series and the Xfinity series and, um, having a, a cup opportunity, I was super, super grateful for, um, at the end of 2019 filling in and then, uh, all of last year with front row. Um, I don't regret going cup racing. I, I don't regret going to front row motorsports. I was blessed with the opportunity from Bob Jenkins and all of our partners involved to be able to go there and run races. And, um, I learned a ton. Uh, there, there's so many different characteristics that go into the cup series. I feel like that you can maximize in, in different ways and, uh, kind of optimize your potential. Um, and you don't really realize that in the, in the truck series or the Xfinity series. And, um, when, when you go to the cup level, um, it's hard to win. It, it's hard to run top 15. It's hard to run top 10. It's hard to run top five. Um, I mean, you're running as hard as you can battling for 20th to 25th. Fifth, uh, as you are trying to run for for fifth place um, in, in the Cup Series, so um, it's uh, everyone is the best of the best up there. Um, and when when it comes down to it, I don't feel like I will put myself in a position to not be able to win races again. Um, I, I think for me, um, being able to win races and know that I can show up to the racetrack uh, every single weekend and have a shot is the biggest thing for me. Um, when, when you're running 15th to 25th or whatever, and you can knock off a couple top tens, it, it's great. Um, it's great for the organization, uh, kind of like we did last year. And, uh, it, I definitely feel like it, it plays into a factor of, uh, kind of helping the guys work for something, um, in the shop. And, uh, for me, 
Um, I, I'm not one to just say that I want to be in the Cup Series. I want to be a Cup Series driver, and I'll just ride around. Um, I'm, I'm here to win races, and that's what I want to do. One other thing real quickly on that, and I, I can respect that, and I guess one, one question I would have in what you were saying is, certainly you talk about learning a lot in Cup uh, last year. Um, there's the belief that, you know, next year is a great opportunity for a lot of people to move up to cut because everybody's going to be working, you know, at, at zero essentially with the new car. Um, would it make sense for you to look at cup in that sense, because of everybody would have the equal opportunity and the opportunity to continue to learn uh, again, only, you know, for being what, 24 years old. Um, I mean, you, you know, in theory, you should have another 20 years left in your career, um, would it not make sense or how do you balance those type of issues as you look, look towards your future in that sense? Well, <laughs> I feel like a lot of people say that the, the new car is going to equal things out or it's a great time to move up because it's a new car coming in. Um, but you are going to see the guys at the top of their level, the guys who run up front every single week and optimize everything continue to do so in the new car. Um, yes, you, you see bigger teams uh, like a Hendrick or a Joe Gibbs or um, Penske, uh, Stuart Haas. They all kind of go through dominating uh, different times of the year. Um, I mean, Hendrick was on a roll earlier this year and um, now I feel like the tide has kind of shifted. So I, feel like it's going to be the same way with the new car. Um, I, I feel like that a lot of guys are saying that it's a great time to move up to the cup series to, to learn the new car. Um, and everyone is going to be on a level playing field, but I, I don't necessarily think that that's the case. So um, for myself as a driver, uh, it kind of goes back to putting yourself in the best opportunity to try and win races. Um, and, and that's where I feel like I'll be. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Our next question is going to come from Chase with NASCAR.com. Go ahead, Chase. Hey, John Hunter. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm curious, with five wins on the year, you have the regular season championship locked up. <clears throat> um, I, wanted to, I wanted you to grade your season, your regular season. I know uh, a lot of people would give you an A+, plus, but I know in the eyes of a driver and team, nothing's perfect. So what grade would you give yourself? And why? Um, <clears throat> I would say a B plus or A-. minus. Um, I feel like we've left a couple of races out there on the table that we should have won. Um, hindsight's always 20, 20, uh, but you can kind of go back and, and look at different things, or if I would have done this different, then we should have won the race. Um, and, and a, a couple of things on that standpoint, um, we, we probably could have salvaged a, a better finish at Bristol dirt. If we didn't get wrecked, um, we lost quite a bit of points that day. Um, so there, there's been a couple of races that I feel like kind of stand out. Um, yes, our, our year has been good with five wins, but not perfect. Um, I, I feel like to give yourself an A or an A plus, you, you kind of have to be perfect. Um, we've led a lot of laps. We've, we've won um, and, and all that kind of stuff. But um, it, at the same time, we want to win every single week. Now, I know that that's not necessarily realistic, but um, you can definitely be in contention. And I feel like we've been able to do that uh, so far as well. Thank you, John Hunter. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, our next question will come from Daniel McFadden. Go ahead, Daniel. Hey, John Hunter. Um, you, you, you mentioned the increased aggression levels in, in the series um, this year, and that was on full display at Knoxville. Um, which turned into a, a wreck fest at the end. So, like going into the postseason and going into Watkins Glen, like you mentioned, a track where basically none of, no one, none of you have raced at, um, except the couple. Um, if you could like sit down with your fellow fellow like truck series drivers and as the, the grizzled veteran that you are, uh, have a conversation about like how you guys are racing at this point. What would you want to talk to them about? Or would it just be yelling into the wind at this point? <laughs> uh, I think a lot of it is yelling into the wind, but at the same time, um, we've all made mistakes. We've all run over each other. We've, we've all kind of done that coming up through the ranks. Um, but as you continue to move up the ranks, you learn respect and how, how to respect other drivers and race how you want to be raced kind of thing. Um, and and I think that comes from the, the cup series level as well. Um, you don't see a lot of the cup guys going out there and 
running each other over or wrecking each other and different things of that sort. Um, I've had my fair share in the day um, uh, of wrecking trucks and uh, battling and, and kind of getting in over my head and making mistakes and whatnot. But um, it, it comes back to respect and um, just trying to run every single lap as hard as you can without making those mistakes or w- without just running over uh, the competition. So um, it, it, it'll all kind of turn around. They'll, they'll learn. Um, and, and that just comes with experience and knowledge and, uh, being able to race around certain guys. How, how noticeable for you is the difference in aggression level from now compared to when you were, you know, originally in the truck series, you know, a few, a few years ago. Uh, I think when I first came into the truck series, you still had guys like Ron Hornaday and, uh, Johnny Sauter was another one. Uh, Matt Crafton is still here. Um, you, you had quite a few veterans that were in the truck series and, uh, you also had, um, Ryan Blaney, Chase Elliott, uh, Cole Custer. Um, you, you have a lot of, get, uh, a lot of the guys that are in the cup series now and they're in the cup series for a reason. Um, so when you're able to race around those guys and you kind of get, I guess, uh, not necessarily brought up in a different way, but, um, you, you have respect for your equipment. You kind of, you work on your own equipment and do things of that sort. Um, I, I feel like you race different. And if I would have wrecked Ron Hornaday or Johnny Sauter, they would have come over to beat my butt after the race, no matter if I was 16 or 18 years old, it, it doesn't matter. Um, they're, they're the type of guys that kind of instill that respect factor um, like they had back in the day. And, uh, I, I definitely feel like we need more of that today. Um, I, I feel like the, the kids that come from short track racing, everyone is super aggressive. Uh, they, they move each other and I'm not taking anything away from my past, but, um, you, you definitely, uh, learn a lot and, uh, you continue to grow as you get older and wiser and, uh, you, you continue to kind of gain experience and that valuable experience. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and we'll take one final question from Nathan. Go ahead, Nathan. Uh, John Hunter, uh, although your experience is, is pretty limited at Watkins Glen, you have you know more track time than probably most drivers in the field. So how well do you think that will uh, play to your advantage this weekend? I hope it plays to our advantage quite a bit. Um, I hope we can go out there and uh, try and get the lead early and kind of set sail from there. Um, hopefully we can make it a dominating day, but – uh, I feel like Watkins Glen can be a tricky place, uh, especially with no practice and everything. Um, I feel like there's some key areas to being able to make up lap time and uh, some key areas that can definitely hinder your lap time or uh, cause trouble as well. Um, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, there, there's uh, quite a few guys that haven't been there in the past that uh, I'm sure have been on the sim and whatnot. But uh, when you go to a new race track for the first time and have to learn it the first laps on the racetrack uh it definitely can kind of get a little hairy or sketchy um so hopefully uh we we keep our heads on straight uh, all of us myself included and can go out there and put on one heck of a show awesome thank you thank you all right john hunter thank you so much for your time best of luck this weekend in watkins Glen. thank you guys appreciate it